In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts to help us answer the question, stocks peaking now or one more strong push higher? You can pause your video player to read the entire quote from George Soros here, but the net-net bottom line is trading and investing is about probability and risk management rather than predictions. Market Watch headline Friday, May 21st, flash US PMI points to spectacular acceleration of growth in May. You would think that would be good for the stock market. And that very well may be the case. However, you may remember way back on April 23rd, we talked about the fact that extremely rare and elevated U.S. manufacturing numbers can coincide with the beginning of the end for a rally off a low and can happen near an intermediate term peak and pullback. Doesn't necessarily mean the bull market's over, but it does tell us that the odds of a correction may be increasing. That's the glass half empty point of view. And this would be the glass half full point of view. A lot of money on the sidelines right now. And it's possible that if stocks start to move higher, that money could push us higher and push us higher relatively quickly. We really don't have anything in hand right now that says the economy is in trouble. Thus, what might cause problems for the markets? As we've talked about in recent videos, the two things that could potentially take down the market, inflation running hotter than expected for a longer period than expected, and the reaction to that, a shift in Fed policy. Fed officials are signaling that we may be getting closer to a shift that could spook the markets. Everything on your screen was a slide from last week's video with the exception of this small box here where my cursor is. Remember, we talked about the three scenarios here. One of them was that the market could come down to these red diamonds here where my cursor is in a form of a retest. This week we have something that looks like a retest, but it's really too early to call this a successful retest. The stock market can get into this area here, let's say above about 4192-ish, and stay there. The odds would increase that we could move towards 4328. Conversely, if we drop below these red diamonds, which would be near the low made this week and the low made last week, and we stay in this area, then the odds of this scenario start to increase once again. It's not about predictions, it's about probabilities. So the rest of the video will help us assess the probability of scenarios one, two, and three. The rumblings coming out of the Fed this week make it very, very easy to immediately assume we're heading straight to scenario three, new lows, and price is going to trade down in this area here or this area here from last week's video. However, a few weeks ago, we also covered this topic from NDR. This is a cycle composite here. Remember, we said it's possible that we would get a fairly significant pullback in the month of May. We've had a fairly significant pullback in the month of May in the NASDAQ. Then we could possibly right ourselves and push to new highs. Then after that, really, really bad things happened from a historical perspective. And this would be your Nordique phase hypothetically. So what we're trying to determine here is, does the present day look more like a decline like this from here? Or is it possible that that retest look is going to hold and we'll have something that shows the market pushing higher into, let's say, June, July, or August? Now remember, we assess probabilities based on the facts that we have in hand. So what are the facts that we have in hand say about option number three here or new lows? And all of these charts, you can pause your video player. This is NASDAQ percent new lows. This is calendar year 2017 out to the present day on the right side of the screen over here. Q1 2018, Q4 2018, the COVID plunge here. This is what we look like today. This is what the indicator looked like during the plunge over here as well. In terms of the facts that we have in front of us as of May 20th, in this case, we don't really have anything overly alarming on this chart yet. So NASDAQ technical index, here's the look May 19th, basically the same look as of the close on May 20th. Really doesn't look that bad yet. 
you may remember the blue lines here would be where the market started to get a little bit dicey relative to the reading on this indicator in three scenarios the 1983-84 correction after the 1982 major low, the 2010 correction after a major low in 2009, and the third one is the major low after the dot-com bust. You make a low in 2002 and eventually you get a correction in 2004. The orange lines are those three scenarios as well when things really started to go sideways for the stock market. And as you can see, even recently, the indicator was down here. Bad things happened in the stock market. The indicator was down in this area here. Bad things continued to happen in the stock market. Right now, this too is saying pay closer attention, but we're above all three of these orange lines and we're above this level here and this level here. We held in this general area earlier in the year and the stock market held right here. So until proven otherwise, this is telling us to keep an open mind about the possibility of the market pushing higher. Similar concepts here, MISE new highs minus new lows. This is a weekly chart, a weekly reading. So this is as of last week. This is the 2010 case, which is very, very similar to the present day in terms of the move off the 2009 low in the S&P 500. Here's where the S&P 500 peaks, where my cursor is. This is what the indicator did. It quickly moved below really all of these lines here. This is what the indicator looked like last week. When the indicator was up in this region here, the stock market was still rallying in 2009 and 2010. When things started to get really, really dicey, we dropped into this area here clearly. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at this 2010 case to see what we can learn. This may help us discern where we are in the present day. In 2010, you get a fairly significant pullback in the S&P 500 here in Q1, but the correction doesn't start until April, and then we bottom on July 2nd. The moral of the story here is, when the market had the pullback and then pushed to higher highs, this is where the indicator was, right here basically the same level that we saw in the rear view mirror recently right here and right here is similar to right here and right here compare and contrast the look in the present day to the look here when things really were bad we moved into this area here it's also noteworthy things were a little dicey here in february and then the s p 500 rallied from close to close here point a to point b 15.19% before falling significantly later in the year. Thus, as we walk forward, if this indicator gets down into this area here below all of these lines, then the probability of that lower low scenario, the probabilities of that scenario start to increase. Conversely, if we make a stand here from these levels earlier in the year, which is similar to this point here, it's possible that institutional cash could be redeployed and we could get a rally that exceeds expectations. This rally lasted almost two and a half months. Top portion of your screen is the Bitcoin trust relative to TLT or bonds. The chart that we covered last week was not a good week for the ratio. For the full week, ending May 21st, GBTC underperformed TLT by roughly 24%. NYSE breath momentum oscillator, 2010 here, similar situation. This is the area or the look we want to avoid where the S&P 500 has a major pullback or correction. Here are your readings here. 2018 Q4 was no picnic volatility wise in the S&P 500. Here are your readings down here. And in the COVID plunge, here are your readings. This chart's dated May 19th. Where are we today? Are we down here or even down in this area here? The answer is no. We recently popped down below this blue line here. This chart may deteriorate soon and look like this, but it hasn't deteriorated yet. Blue and orange lines tell us where things get a little bit more dicey. 2010 correction, 2004. This is where we close this week. Top portion is the chart that we covered in last week's video on May 14th up here. 
No significant breakdown on this chart as of Friday session, May 21st. We cover these concepts in detail in the April 30th video, so we'll move quickly. No significant breakdown here, Friday, May 21st, 3.33 p.m. Eastern Time. However, momentum is still looking very, very indecisive here, but price has not broken down yet. We're going to learn something either way. The rally either continues or we get a failed breakout look similar to this or this. I want to give you a look at some of these breath indicators as of the close on Friday, May 21st. That's the case here. Notice we're above all of the lines, the blue and orange lines that help us compare the present day to the pre and early correction stages in 2004 and 2010. Everything that we said about the previous chart applies to this chart dated May 21st as of the close. Last week we showed this chart up here and said the S&P 500 was near potential support and near a gap here. This is how the exact same chart looked during the session, late in the session on Friday, May 21st. We're basically sitting around this area in here not much has changed. No significant rally yet and no significant breakdown yet. All of this speaks to a market that's been indecisive lately. We'll just have to see which way it breaks. We were indecisive here. We broke to the upside. Indecisive here. We broke to the upside. NASDAQ 100 breath momentum oscillator above our orange and blue lines. If charts were helpful a few weeks ago, they should be helpful today. This chart here was shown on May 5th. The ratio of stocks to bonds was sitting at 0.72, near potential support here where my cursor is. Not much has changed. The same line here was slightly higher during the session 3.29 p.m. Eastern on May 21st. Once again, we'll learn something based on what happens in the coming days and weeks. Common theme here, NYSE common stock only breath momentum oscillator above our blue and orange lines. This is a more dicey look here in 2020. Covered these ratios a few weeks ago. This is the look during the session around 3.20 p.m. on May 21st. What once acted as resistance may now act as support possible inflection point in here where my cursor is very very similar look here possible inflection point as of friday's session still holding above this line here as of friday's session this is still in an uptrend the last major thing this ratio did was make a higher high that's quite a bit different than the look of the same ratio during the COVID plunge NYSE new highs, S&P 500 here. Here's the painful correction in Q4 of 2018 here. Notice in the relatively early stages, the indicator is down here near this orange area here. Haven't come down that far in the present day. Similar situation, COVID plunge. See, we're here in the relatively early stages of the decline. Weight of the evidence approach, NYSE greater than their 150-day simple moving average above orange and blue as of the close on May 21st. You can pause your video player here. You can see where the indicator was in the relatively early stages of corrections for the S&P 500 index, and then you can compare that to what we've seen in the present day. Also noteworthy, before this plunge in the S&P 500 and before this plunge in the S&P 500. Bunch of white space up here. Bunch of white space up here. Not what we have in the present day. Much, much stronger. This may speak to the longer term outlook rather than the intermediate term outlook. This chart was indecisive last week. It's still indecisive. Something that's a little bit better, though. This is the close on Friday, May 21st. Subtle difference. Notice last week, we closed basically in the midpoint of the range. This week, right here, we closed closer to the upper portion of the range. It's a subtle difference, but a difference between the two.
NASDAQ advanced decline volume trend break here early in the process where the S&P 500 corrects in calendar year 2004. Trend break here early in the pullback in 2010 and a second trend break. Thus far, we have what looks like consolidation as of May 18th. And instead of making a series of lower highs and lower lows, lower highs and lower lows, we're still making a series of higher highs and higher lows as of 1.12 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, May 21st. Have we seen any significant shift on the growth stock front relative to the equal weight, discretionary relative to the S&P 500, or the triple Qs relative to value stocks? As of Friday's session, the answer is no. These ratios are also making a series of lower highs and lower lows. This speaks to relative performance and relative probabilities. Dow held here in November, good things happened. Held in this general area in February, good things happened. Held here in March, good things happened. Stalled in near the similar area in the present day. In the previous cases, we popped back up, we popped up, we popped up. This is a little bit slower in terms of the momentum. Very, very similar concepts here. You can pause your video player. S&P 500 corrections down here. You can see where the indicator was in the relatively early stages of these pullbacks. And you can compare that to where we are this week. This chart is dated May 20th. No significant change. As of the close on May 21st, we popped up to this blue line here. NASDAQ Composite, over the past few months, we have a gap convention telling us that the market believes that this area is very, very important in terms of the next move. Nothing has been resolved yet. We haven't even filled this gap down here from earlier in May. You want to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes? You want to keep an open mind about some of that institutional cash possibly being redeployed? This can help with that originally showed this chart or marked it up on May 10th. Only other time we've been this high, 2009. The market rallied for months after that before peaking. And pause your video player here. The present day, like many of these charts, looks better over here above all of these lines relative to this area over here. The market peaks here. Look how low the indicator was before that peak. This is the peak here. If we compare this level here to the level that we've seen in the present day, we have not been down that low and we're sitting up here this week. All of these charts, incredibly important to understand that things can change very, very quickly. And the odds are pretty good that when we see something like this, the earlier stages of that change, that the breath data will look a lot worse than it did during Friday's session at 1.35 p.m. Most likely, if we're going to see something like this, everything will be lopsided to the downside. That may happen very, very soon, but it didn't happen during Friday's give back intraday. It's important that we figure out how to use information this chart here as of Thursday, it's trend breaks that tend to be relevant. This is where we were on Wednesday over here near this potential area of support. On Thursday, we bounced there. No trend break yet. This is consolidation. We could either go that way or this way. We'll see how it plays out right now. The last thing this did was make a higher high, and this is still a higher low relative to this low. Percentage of Dow stocks greater than 150-day simple moving average above all of our guideposts relative to the 2004 and 2010 corrections. S&P 500 stocks greater than their 150-day moving average. We were recently way up here, similar to this reading here, this reading here, and this reading here. In all three of those cases, the stock market was not days away from a significant pullback. Instead, in many cases, it was weeks or months away from a significant pullback, helping us keep an open mind 
about a wide range of outcomes, including better than expected outcomes over the next several days and weeks. Let's look at the same indicator from a little bit different perspective. This line of demarcation here was early in this correction in 2004. This line of demarcation here was relatively early in the correction in 2010. This is where we're sitting as of the close on May 20th. S&P 500 relative to tech, we still have the three steps for a probable trend change. We broke the trend line here, made a higher low here relative to this low, and then printed a higher high here relative to this high. All of this speaks to probabilities and not certainties. May see some consolidation in this area here, even if this uptrend continues. No big change on tech versus equal weight during the session on May 21st. This is making a series of lower highs and lower lows. The volatility index did put in a lower high this week. That would tend to add to the keep an open mind about a rally and moving into the white space on that S&P 500 chart. Admittedly, we're in a different situation in the present day. This fear spike here is a deflationary spike. Part of our problem in the present day is the market's concerned about inflation. However, at some point, if the stock market's going to drop 15 or 16% or 9%, even if bonds drop during that period, a ratio like this will probably rise because bonds would tend to drop less than the stock market. We just don't have anything like that in the present day. This is May 21st at 2.09 p.m. Eastern Time. This is the S&P 500 here. These notes down here are reminding us that many of the studies that we've done in the past are telling us that we're either near probabilistic upside targets or we're already above them. In this case, there's a target somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,300. Gold in isolation trying to complete step one or a break of a downward sloping trend line. Gold relative to the equal weight S&P 500 has a lot of work to do. Russell 1000 growth relative to TLT or to IWF relative to TLT. This represents possible support. However, this is growth relative to RSP. It remains in a downtrend. Small cap growth relative to intermediate treasuries or IEF, moral of the story. The ratio is near potential support in favor of small caps. Notice we said potential support. The IWOSPY ratio is near the 61.8% retracement of this A to B move, telling us to keep an open mind about a move in this direction and a move in this direction. Obviously, if we get something the polar opposite of that, we'll learn something about correction probabilities for the S&P 500 and risk assets in general. Same concepts apply here. Potential support held, potential support held. We're near a similar area in the present day. We've also held so far near this gap. ARKK versus TLT had a gap up here in December of last year. We're back to that general area. This would be a logical place if this ratio is going to try to resume the prior uptrend. It would be great if somebody could take an indecisive market and tell you that something else is going on. Indecisive markets aren't a lot of fun and they require patience and discipline. We have no control over all of these indecisive looks, but we do have control over how we manage risk. High-low close bars, closing prices, both telling us we're near an important or possible inflection point. Remember we covered the squeeze a few weeks ago here? No resolution yet. Go back and reread the George Soros quote. Everybody wants predictions. What's going to happen? We're much better off saying, if it moves in this direction, how am I going to handle it? If it continues to move sideways, how am I going to handle it? And if it drops like a stone, how do I handle that? Intermediate-term treasuries relative to long-term treasuries. This point A 
chart date of May 5th that we covered in a previous video is basically the same as this point A here. This is the chart from Friday's session. So far, what once acted as resistance may now act as support. We have data in hand that can be associated with the term melt up. And we have data in hand that tells us it's too early to assume this look here is a successful retest. And we all know the best way to handle all of this is to head into next week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.